Funding for election 2014 coverage is provided in part by AARP, a nonprofit, nonpartisan association, 86,000 strong in North Dakota. AARP fights on real issues that matter to you and your family. And by the members of Prairie Public. Welcome to Prairie Public's continuing coverage of Election 2014. I'm Matt O'Lean. This is the debate for North Dakota's Agriculture Commissioner. My guests today are Democrat Ryan Taylor and Republican Agriculture Commissioner Doug Goring. Based on a coin flip to determine order of opening and closing statement, Ryan Taylor will go first with a one minute opening statement. Thank you, Matt. Thanks to Prairie Public and thanks to AARP for sponsoring this. Uh, Egg Commissioner is an important race in North Dakota this year, uh, mainly because agriculture is our number one industry, but the decisions made by Egg Commissioner deal with both agriculture and energy and how we balance those two. Uh, after 125 years of statehood uh, with agriculture uh, pulling the cart, we need to make sure that as we go through energy development that uh, agriculture is not lost. I have to thank my wife Nikki, uh, my wife of 11 years who's been through uh, five elections with me since uh, the day we got married at uh, Keene First Lutheran in McKenzie County. Uh, our three children who've been on the campaign trail with me. Uh, Nikki and I uh, went through uh, three very successful campaigns for the state senate where I uh, learned the, the ropes of, of policy making in North Dakota. Uh, served on the agriculture committee. I studied agriculture at NDSU uh, right here in Fargo. So as we go into this race we realize that those are skills that, that we need to bring forward. Knowledge of agriculture, uh, fourth generation on our family cattle ranch with hopefully uh, uh, my okay, sons or daughter minute. being the fifth generation. That's one minute we need to, yep. Stick you to the one minute yeah. on openings. Doug Goring, one minute opening statement. Well, uh, Doug Goring, I'm North Dakota Agriculture Commissioner. I'm a third generation farmer. I farm with my son uh, near Minokin in South Central North Dakota. Agriculture is one of our leading industries in North Dakota and I'm proud of the fact that in the last four years we've increased exports by about 40, by about 70 percent. Also, I'm committed to those initiatives that best serve North Dakota and North Dakota agriculture, which is diversity, innovation, research, and trade. We have a great story to tell. And part of it goes back to the whole fact that we are the envy of the nation. We have the lowest unemployment, the fastest growing economy. 80% of North Dakotans feel we're headed in the right direction. And we've even been uh, characterized as being the happiest state in the nation, edging out Hawaii. I will continue to be and committed to being balanced and a common sense approach towards regulations. It's important that we continue to protect our okay, farmers and ranchers. Minute, Doug. One minute, okay, let's move on to our first topic. You can come back to those things in the closing statements if you want. Uh, Doug Goring, you're gonna start first on this topic. Let's start with the Ag Commissioner's role in the Industrial Commission. How do you, uh, if either one of you are elected, balance the oil interests versus the energy interests versus the agricultural interests and how do you each feel about the special places proposal as well? Doug Goring, you start now. My role on the, Agri on the Industrial Commission goes back to the whole issue surrounding representing those that have an interest on the land here in North Dakota. Agriculture is vitally important. It's our number one industry in North Dakota. And we need to be out there protecting and helping those farmers and ranchers. And that goes back to my plan and my stance on mitigating risk, minimizing impact, and shrinking that footprint on the prairie and understanding that there is a constitutional right to develop those minerals and trying to work on that and balance that approach and making sure that those farmers and ranchers have the ability to call and use our program, our mediation program, to address some of those issues. Four years ago, we took the approach of broadening the scope. I went to the legislature to broaden the scope of that program to help those farmers and ranchers so that we can minimize those impacts on the land. And when we have issues, we need to go back and address those with companies and that's what I've been doing. Okay, Ryan Taylor, response? The Industrial Commission is a, a primary role for the uh, uh, Commissioner of Agriculture. That's why I brought out a Landowner's Bill of Rights early in the campaign because I know that the landowners, those farmers and ranchers who produce a crop above the ground, need to have their interests balanced with those mineral developers who have the right to pull the resources out from below the ground. Uh, these are simple things that, that uh, I would propose that, that allow us to do both, still get the oil, uh, but still have a, a crop on top. 
so that they're protected from saltwater spills, so that those landowners know that there's going to be reclamation when the oil is gone, so the topsoil's back in place for them to farm and to ranch that same land. To make sure that their kid's bedroom window has got enough space between that drilling rig and their house, uh, so that they can go to bed at night that if there's a flare burning out there. Um, I would uh, always look out for the interest of agriculture on the Industrial Commission to make sure that this industry that has brought us to the dance is well represented. We will have to do both. And, and we know that uh, sometimes existing industries like agriculture can, can feel the brunt of development in, in not always the best of ways. So we need to bring people together. We need to bring agriculture and energy together. Uh, energy could play for 30, 40 years or more in North Dakota. But agriculture will always be here. It is the definition of a, of a renewable industry and renewable resources ever since our homesteading grandparents came here. So I would take that responsibility e extremely uh, serious uh, to make sure that farmers and ranchers are represented at that table. Okay, Doug Gorn, you want to hop back in and respond? The other issue about uh, special places, that was one of the things that I stood and, and firmly opposed simply based on the fact that if you are going to identify a few places in North Dakota as being significant or special, what does that mean for the rest of those places in North Dakota? Our farmers and ranchers suffer quite often scrutiny from the public and from activists about their farming and ranching habits out on the prairie. And this was no different. All they did was turn their attention towards energy at the time. They will turn it back to agriculture and I wanted to make sure that we weren't put in a position where by identifying a few special places which have been characterized by some, that all of a sudden agriculture would get picked on at a later date where cows and combines would no longer be, uh, have that opportunity to be out on the prairie in somebody's view shed. Those are my concerns. We've seen it in the western part of the United States, especially where we have uh, federal lands and some state lands out in the western Rockies, and it's a concern. We can't go down that road. We shouldn't open that door. We do need to take the same approach on every piece of land out there, and that again goes back to mitigating those risks, minimizing those impacts, and shrinking that footprint so that we have the least amount of impact for our farmers and ranchers and the least amount of effect on them in their lives. Okay, Ryan Taylor, last word on this, and then we'll move to Farm Bill. And good to touch on special places. When, when the Republican Attorney General Wayne Stengem brought up the special places proposal, I looked at it very hardly, uh, very hard, because uh, I wanted to know the, the impacts of it. Uh, I think it was a modest proposal that looked at saving what North Dakotans would define North Dakota as uh, for generations to come. Still allow energy to get the oil uh, from beneath that ground. Uh, did not preclude development in, in my reading of the proposal. And I think that North Dakotans, uh, by and large, would like to save some of those places uh, uh, so that we can recognize them years from now. Uh, I believe the energy industry would still be able to pull the oil up from under that ground. And, and obviously, we need to protect agriculture in this entire mix. And, and to say that you know, it would be a slippery slope would be abdicating our responsibility. My responsibility would make sure that uh, the proposal was specific and that it didn't include agriculture and that the ranchers would always get to graze their cows on, on that ground and that we would continue to hold the culture that's brought North Dakota through this 125 years, bring the people together to make sure we can do both, uh, both energy and ag as we've advocated all along in this process and, uh, and save something for our children and grandchildren. Okay, let's move on to Farm Bill. What is your, each of your views on the recently enacted Farm Bill and what would you like to see changed or enacted in the next Farm Bill? Ryan Taylor, you start this time. Farm Bill is, is critically important in North Dakota and I think it's a, a primary role of our Ag Commissioner, although it's federal policy to advocate on behalf of North Dakota farmers who depend on that Farm Bill. Uh, obviously, uh, this was a, a long fought battle. Uh, I think uh, we could have been more vocal uh, from the Ag Commissioner's office uh, early and, and often to make sure that uh, there weren't political games being played in it. Uh, I think what came through uh, has been uh, uh, generally pretty well accepted by farmers and, and ranchers, uh, provisions of it. Um, the devil will be in getting those details down uh, as, as the rules are set. But we wanted to come through it with, uh, with a strong crop insurance provision. Uh, I know that my neighbors and friends who farm and ranch across North Dakota depend on, on that uh, completely uh, as a safety net. And it's the one that we need to keep and maintain in, in North Dakota. Uh, there is obviously some livestock provisions that help those who, who had a disastrous blizzard uh, uh, in the southwestern corner of North Dakota. We often hear of it most in, in South Dakota. Um, that was something that needed to come early uh, for, our, for our ranchers that needed that help. And uh, I would make sure that those in Washington understand the impact of it, 
so that we don't play games of splitting this title from that title to make sure that we have something that's going to be very successful in the political process that really affects our economy. Okay, Doug Goring, response? My concern is now that we have this new farm bill and how we got here certainly, uh, certainly bothers me a great deal because it's been so misrepresented. This is a non-traditional farm bill. It is completely stripped out from all the support that it had in previous years over many, many decades. And what we were hoping to get out of it was even a more enhanced crop insurance uh, component for agriculture. It has some different components to it. Some of it has been enhanced. But for the most part, we've stripped away a lot of support for agriculture, production agriculture in the United States. Two things came out of it, the uh, price loss coverage uh, concept and the agricultural risk coverage concept. Both of those uh, are important. The price loss coverage concept actually fits the South better than it does the North. The rest of the Midwest, it'll probably be agricultural risk coverage that will cover us, mo the majority of our producers here in North Dakota and in the Midwest. The other bothersome thing about it was the fact that uh, conservation compliance ended up coming into that entire farm bill that really tied the hands of our producers in the upper Midwest and especially those in North Dakota. That's of great concern. We do have something a little bit better now, but it still has some complexities to it. We're gonna have to figure it out as we move forward. I know we're getting closer to those sign-up dates. There's a lot of anxiety about what plans somebody should take, what they should do, because the other thing about this, once you sign up, you're locked into that. There's no changing. The uh, Livestock Indemnity Program the Forage Livestock Assistance Program are vitally important to our producers. We're doing a little bit more all the time for animal agriculture in these farm bills, but unfortunately we've stripped away a lot of support really for production agriculture when we look at grain farming. And unfortunately, uh, we tied conservation compliance back into it and that is damaging to our farmers. Okay, Ryan Taylor, response? I think uh, we both agree on the importance of the farm bill and, and knowing that it's go always going to get a little bit tougher. To, to pass that farm bill in Washington, D.C. And, and I know that uh, as Ag Commissioner, we need someone who can communicate uh, uh, across both party lines and, and, and across uh, urban and, and rural divides to make sure that all of our country realizes the importance of a, a strong food policy, uh, whether you're representing an urban district in, in New York City or a rural district in the Great Plains of, of America. Uh, I think uh, we'll go forward and, and learn from this process, uh, knowing that uh, uh, our farm organizations, who I would listen to as, as Ag Commissioner, are, are going to have uh, in-depth knowledge uh, of these issues, how they affect them on the ground, uh, know that uh, livestock is an important sector in this state, uh, and we realize this year, I think, how important uh, uh, the provisions are as, as crop prices plummet, as we struggle to get grain on the rail and, and get it to market. And uh, while the cattle market is, is very good right now, uh, we know that uh, those things change uh, in, in a heartbeat. Okay, Doug Goring, I'll give you the last word and then we'll move on. A couple years ago in August, I asked all the ag community in North Dakota to come together to sit down and talk about what it is that we can all agree upon what we'd like to see in a farm bill. And when they got there, the one thing that we threw out and talked about right away is I said, I understand where everybody has a standing policy at and I understand where your sacred cow is, but you're gonna have to take that sacred cow to Washington and sacrifice it on that altar because right here in North Dakota, we need to talk about what is good for everybody in the state. And we did work on crop insurance. Unfortunately, we had issues with the Washington Post and the New York Times that misrepresented the amount of support that was really being received by farmers from the federal government. And when they did that, it did us a great disservice because we weren't able to get over some of those humps and get to Congress on the issues about supporting our industry with a better crop insurance program. We're making some better strides. We're looking at some other supportive materials and products that can probably be used in this next, uh, next farm bill, but uh, it's gonna take some more work. Let's move on to another issue that's within the purview of the Industrial Commission, and that's the Bank of North Dakota. Mr. Taylor, you recently came out with some student loan mm -hmm. uh, proposals. How do we balance student loan proposals, easing burdens on students, and how do you guys manage that Bank of North Dakota and that debt, especially with our big surplus? Doug Goring, you go first this time. Well, first of all, um, we were very responsible about four or five months ago when we finally took on this issue and decided what it was we were gonna do with respect to interest rates. We looked at the Dill Consolidation Loan 
and we took uh, interest rates on a fixed down to 5.29 percent. We then looked at the variable uh, rates on a deal consolidation loan, took them down to 1.73, and if you took automatic payment, 1.48 percent. Our problem isn't just continuing to lower that interest rate, it really has to do with making sure that we can lower the cost of education. That's an issue that we need to continue to take up with the legislature, but part of that goes back to stimulating and supporting a robust economy to generate the revenue so that we can use that revenue to offset the higher cost of education because it's just like farming. You could give farmers interest-free money. They still have the debt to pay back. We need to lessen those costs. We, make it, we need to make it much easier for them when they go to college not to have such high debt. And then the interest rates almost become a nominal issue. Brian Taylor. Student loan interest is is a area that I looked at because knowing that the Ag Commissioner sits on the bank or the Industrial Commission, which oversees the bank in North Dakota, this was an area where we could lead. And and in this campaign, we've always tried to lead with ideas. This is a marketplace of ideas in a campaign, and we've provided that leadership. We advocate for one percent across the board. Uh, we've had strong profits in the bank in North Dakota, uh, strong profits from their student loan uh, part of that portfolio. And I want to set North Dakota apart because we have a huge uh, workforce shortage in the state of North Dakota, short term and long term. Uh, when I graduated from, from NDSU uh, uh, 22 years ago, uh, I was able to graduate with $7,000 in student loan debt. Uh, average is now $27,000. Uh, we're not giving money away. They pay the money back. North Dakota has a very low default rate. But if they look at that 1% interest rate across the board, flat, less than 5.29, um, this brings, uh, keeps our students here. Uh, it could bring other workers here that can call, consolidate that loan, become the welders and the electricians that we need in the, in the energy sector of North Dakota, uh, become the engineers for tomorrow, uh, the agronomists and uh, the animal scientists that our agriculture industry needs. So I think it's really a matter of leading. Uh, we obviously have to work with the Board of Higher Ed to make sure that we control the cost of education as best we can, uh, advocate to the legislature. But what we could do as Ag Commissioner uh, we'll start with the Bank of North Dakota and reinvesting those profits in our next generation. Yeah, I'm going to see if we can get three more topics yeah. in, so let's move on to another one. Crop prices once high are now falling. What are your views on crop prices? How much input should the government have, or should the free market uh, uh, just kind of work its way through crop prices? Ryan Taylor, you start this time. Crop prices have, have plummeted in North Dakota, and as I said, uh, you know, uh, those of us in the cattle side have, have been enjoying good prices yet, but we know this changes uh, in a heartbeat. Uh, when we look at the size of crop, and we know uh, from my ag econ background that uh, it's a supply and a, a demand function. North Dakota, I think, is interesting in that not only is it a, a supply and a demand function, it's also an, an issue of rail transportation. And while the world market is going to continue to work on, on where that price is set, North Dakota farmers are, I think, what I hear on the campaign trail most is, is further frustrated by the fact that they've got a dollar basis that gives them less money for their crop than, than many other places in this country because of the bottleneck we have in rail transportation. Uh, that's an area where I think the Ag Commissioner needs to focus. Uh, we know markets are going to ebb and flow. Um, we're lucky to have low interest rates, but uh, hopefully our, our farmers and ranchers uh, have got their house in order uh, after some good years in, in agriculture. Uh, based on, on world demand, uh, based on the fact that uh, the market is growing and more people are, are demanding our products, but when we, uh, when we produce, uh, we can see it go the other direction. So we know that market prices are going to do uh, what they do based on supply and demand. As Ag Commissioner, uh, let's work on rail transportation, let's get part of that dollar basis back for our producers, and let's make sure we're ready to capitalize on, on the, next, uh, the next increase. Okay, Doug Goring, response? My farm uh, is experiencing the same difficulties that we are seeing clear across the upper Midwest and across the nation. The markets swung too far one way, now they've swung too far back the other way. I need about $4.10 a bushel just to break even on my corn, and right now my local market is 207. That's a long ways away from breaking even. We need markets, and as Ag Commissioner, I've stepped out and built some of those markets. We've taken delegations into other countries. We're now exporting into 73 countries around the world. In my previous life, I worked with international marketing, developed more of those relationships. When we're out there, we're now uh, working in those different markets to develop those relationships and move our commodities. We produce about 40 
well, 40 to 50 different commodities in North Dakota. If you include animal agriculture, we're up to 50 different commodities in North Dakota. We have homes for them out there. We need to work on those issues. The other issue about rail service, it's a concern. Right now, that basis is a dollar to a dollar fifteen. It's about sixty cents to thirty cents over what it should be. That's taken a lot of money out of the rural economy, out of our farmers' pockets. It's one of the reasons I worked with the Port of Vancouver and started that over a year and a half ago, so that we could look at creating some synergies there. They're bringing supplies and products and equipment into North Dakota. We're using those cars to backhaul grain in the Pacific Northwest and get them out of this area, out of these markets, and into different markets across the globe. And we'll continue to do that. Our exports have increased by 70% in the last four years. I'm committed to continue to, to look at those exports in other markets because 96% of our world's population are, is outside of our borders. When you look at 80% of our buying power is outside of our borders, and 92% of the middle class growth is going to exist outside of our borders. Okay. We need to move on to another issue that's affordable housing. This question comes from our co-sponsor, AARP. Uh, continues to be a challenge across North Dakota, especially in the West, where it's very high rent prices. Many people, including seniors, have been displaced from their longtime communities. As a member of the Industrial Commission, what would you do to accelerate building of affordable housing? Doug Goring, you go first. Continuing to support those projects, affordable uh, housing is primary. We need it for those that are in fixed incomes. We have those that work in the service industry in western North Dakota, but clear across the whole entire state of North Dakota are elderly on fixed incomes. We need to have affordable housing in those communities. We've been supporting those projects everywhere that we can, and we've been looking at uh, uh, tax credits to do so. We've got to continue to look at that, ramp that up, expand that program, create those opportunities so that we get more investors involved in building more affordable housing and working with the housing finance agency to make sure that we can identify more communities and more needs out there. Ryan Taylor, response? The housing finance agency is under the purview of the industrial commission and, and I was proud in this race to have uh, captured the endorsement of the North Dakota Realtors Association, uh, an endorsement that had, had gone to my opponent in the past and, and I think that says something about this race that they want uh, creativity and they want action and they want someone who will fight uh, for those tax credits not just in an election year but every year. Uh, the housing incentive fund uh, obviously needs more dollars. Uh, they, we have a biennium uh, for that fund and it was gone in six months. So I would be an Ag Commissioner who would, who would represent the Industrial Commission, step in front of the legislature and say we need to fund this at a much more robust rate. Uh, I would work with the Housing Finance Agency to get more supply on the ground so that our residents don't feel like they have to move out of their home communities. Uh, maybe uh, expand that uh, beyond multifamily housing to, to single family housing and make sure that uh, uh, our rents are affordable that uh, our elderly in particular uh, can stay in their homes whether they live in Williston or Fargo. Uh, we have housing pressures all across the state and uh, we know that this office is, is much more than agriculture and we have a unique opportunity to do more. Okay, I'm going to get a quick 30, 30 or do you want, go ahead respond, yeah. 30 I, seconds then I think 34. My, uh, go ahead. I think Mr. Taylor's being a bit naive or deceptive because the reality is it was well over two years ago that we started the tax credits and we started working on those and we built them into the program. So uh, either you're naive or you're deceptive about that. Ryan Taylor? We know that the tax credits were depleted in six months time. Doug, we got about 30 seconds left. We worked on that, we have to continue talking. to work on it and that's what we're doing. We came up with ways to address this issue to build affordable housing in our communities and we're gonna continue to do that and we're not gonna stop. Okay, Ryan Taylor, last word, then we'll move to closing statements. We know that the uh, housing is important. We know it needs work every day. We know that the legislature meets every two years, and, and that's where the funding stream comes. So uh, we have work to do Okay, we'll bring people together. Closing statements. One minute closing statement. Doug Goring, you go first. We are the envy of the nation, and I believe that we need to continue down that path. We cannot go back to failed and flawed policies of the past where we had government trying to pick winners and losers. We need to stay on track. We have a bright future. We have two large industries that can serve this state well. They do serve us well. We work together to make those things happen. Agriculture is one of those leading industries that we need to continue to focus on because it's gonna be here for a long, long time. Diversity, innovation, research, and trade are some of those basic initiatives and elements that will help us become and stay really efficient, effective, and competitive in a global market.
Okay, Ryan Taylor, final one minute opening or closing statement, sorry. We look forward to the finish of this campaign and what's been a, a very uh, competitive campaign and, and one that we uh, look forward to winning. We know that North Dakota needs leadership uh, in agriculture. Uh, North Dakota needs leadership on, on the Industrial Commission that balances those two needs. We know that uh, farms uh, dictate the economy of all 53 counties in this state that we need to have an economy that's going to be diverse enough to still uh, pivot away once the energy is gone, uh, whether it's 30 or 40 years from now. We need to have an agriculture de uh, department that is stable. Uh, we need to have a commissioner who uh, brings people together, uh, who steps up and leads and is creative and has ideas and make sure that uh, we don't have 70 percent turnover in a department that uh, really works hard to forward agriculture every day in North Dakota and that we always bring people together, whether it's ag or energy or conservation. We need to articulate a vision for this state that everyone can get behind and we know that we can do that and, and that North Dakota's tomorrow will be even brighter than today. I want to thank both of my guests for being here. Ryan Taylor, Doug Goring, good luck on election day. This has been the debate for North Dakota's Agriculture Commissioner. I'm Matt O'Lean. Thanks for watching Prairie Public's continuing coverage of election 2014. So long. Funding for election 2014 coverage is provided in part by AARP, a nonprofit, nonpartisan association, 86,000 strong in North Dakota. AARP fights on real issues that matter to you and your family. And by the members of Prairie Public.